Let's begin. We're on uh, Laman Amid Beis. Once many times. 30, 30, 30B. Uh, a couple of lines down from the top of two dots. Meis Tzarek so we spoke about yesterday this interesting arrangement of a of a sort of loan. It's more like a cash advance, where you buy where you're loaning in money, and the, the debt is secured by the future income, uh, the future miser or truma if he's if he's a kain or a levy. So if he dies, so we 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 explain that this type of debt is not really secured. You can't really ask him to repay the debt. The only thing you can, the only way you can collect is from the trumas maestros of your own field. So if he dies, so he, and the way what happens is sort of you acquire the trumas maestros on his behalf and immediately repay yourself. If he's dead, then, then he's not there to acquire it. So you have to get permission from the inheritors. And the reason for this is because the, the inheritors are not obligated to repay the debt. It's a unique type of debt, and in this type of debt, they're not, they're not obligated to repay. Tanya Milo, Rebbe Aimer, Yershin Shiyershu. We talk about permission from the inheritors, we're talking about the permission of the inheritors that inherited. So the Gemara says, Amik, Yershin, the Layarti, are the type of inheritors that don't inherit. El Amr Vechlan, what do you mean, the, the inheritors that inherited? Like, why would I think that they didn't inherit? El Amr Vechlan, Shiyershu, Karka, Velo Shiyershu, Ksofen. It has to be that they, that they inherited property and not, not money. Because if they had inherited property, at least so, so technically speaking, uh, before a thousand years ago, uh, um, inheritors were only obligated to repay to repay a loan if there was property, if there was uh, if there was money or movable ass movable assets, then they were not obligated to repay the loan. About a thousand years ago, the Gaina made a decree and they said that there's no such thing. It doesn't make a difference, and even if a person just has mo- just has money or movable objects, that those assets are still liable to repay the debt. Now, one second. So the Gemara is saying here is that it has to be that they inherited property. So at least there, those there is sort of a, a theoretical. Argument that they replaced their they they replaced their father as the as the debtors. Okay, Amr Vechlan Iniach Molei Machat Goyve Molei Machat Molei Kardim Goyve Molei Kardim. I'm sorry, Sir Vianison says interesting. It depends on how much property they inherited. So if they inherited a small amount of property, and the Gemara gives an example, Gemara calls it a needle. One needle worth of property is a tiny amount of property that. That's how much you can collect of Trumus Meisters. In other words, we see the Trumus Meisters as if they take the place of the property. So you can collect maximally as much as, much as there is property. And if there's a large piece of property, an axe full of property, so then you can collect an axe full. For Vyechlin Amar, or Vyechlin says, I feel a niach molly machat gave him a carnum and come Isaac to the Tina Dabaya. Fifteen lines, about a third of the way down the page, and two dots. Yep, Dikatina. Yeah. Um, Sir Yechman says, even if you have a small amount of property, you can collect, uh, you know, a needle full of property, connect an axe full, connect a large piece of property. Why is this? Because the story of Katina the Abaya. What was that story? There was a fellow who borrowed $100. He's a debtor, owed $100. He left behind a $50 piece of real estate. And some cash. So the the uh, the kids they wanted to keep the real estate. So they said, "Look, you you're only owed fifty dollars worth of real estate. We're going to give you fifty dollars cash and uh, and just leave the piece of real estate alone." So he agreed. So he took the fifty dollars cash, and then, if sure enough, he took fifty dollars worth of property too. So uh, Abaya says that he's entitled to. He's he's entitled to collect the property again because it's it's a it's as if additional property has become available, which belong to the father, and therefore uh, the 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 creditor is, is entitled to that property. The only way they could have avoided this is if they would have said that the creditor the creditor forgives the loan, but he didn't write that. They said he agrees not to take it, but. That, that sort of agreement is pretty meaningless, and he just took it anyway. 
So therefore, Rabbi Yechon is saying a similar idea. Because you can collect a property many times, uh, therefore, you, even if he only leaves a small amount of property, you could still recollect the same property many times. So you can collect much more truma than there is property. Next, Gemara. Tonor Abonon. Yisrael Sh'amar Lelevi, Maisa Yesh Lecha Biyadi. Ein Chayshin Lechumas Maisa. If a Yisrael says to a Levi, I have Maisa in my, in my, in my, in my uh, possession. Ein Chayshin Lechumas Maisa Shabbat. We're not concerned that maybe there's Trumas Meiser inside of that Meiser. Let's say he gives a number. No, a number. One second. Let's say he says Kor Meiser Yesh Here, there's I you I I have in my property a, a, a one you know one one core worth of Meiser. We're concerned of Trumas Meiser. So Mara says, what is, what's the concern here? My call. Rabbi Abai explains as follows. This is what it means. Yisrael tells the Levi, I have $100 of Meiser. I have Meiser in my property. Here's $100. I'm buying it from you. So we're not concerned here that the, what the Levi... In other words, the the, the 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 Jew says to the Levi, "I have Trumas, I have Meiser. Whose responsibility is it to take off Trumas Meiser? It's the Levi's responsibility. The, the mainstream opinion is that a Yisrael cannot take off Trumas Meiser. Well, that might be a little different today because we don't even give Meiser to a, a Levi. And with regard to the Mai, I think he could. Mai is if it's whether it's in doubt, but but." Uh, that being said, we, we're not going to, so the Levi is the one to take up Truma's Meiser, typically. Over here, the Levi knows he has he has Meiser in the Jew's property. So maybe he took that Meiser in the Jew's property and he turned it into Truma's Meiser for other stuff that he had as well. You, 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 you have, see, see, he had, you know, he got, uh, let's say, a core of, of grapes and he had, he got grapes from somebody else, five other people. So he wants to take up Trumas Meisers from those five other people on the on the the uh, Meiser that's in this Jew's house. Okay so, okay, so what happened? Then the Jew says, I want to buy it from you. I want to buy you off of you the Meiser. We're not concerned that maybe he turned the Meiser into Trumas Meiser. I'm welcome for something else. However, if he tells him a measurement, he says, you know how much Meiser I have? It's one core. Then we are concerned that maybe he made he turned it into Trumas Meiser. Okay, so what's the difference? If he doesn't know the measurement, he obviously could have never turned it into Trumas Meiser. But once he knows the measurement, he knows that it's a core. So now he can turn into now he knows how much there is available to turn into Trumas Meiser. So then that's what he could do. Okay. So th this is highly questionable. Why? <laughs> because the guy selling his Trumas Meiser. And he's he's a thief, effectively. Because, in other words, the Gemara mean, mean to tell us that there's there's sort of a, the possibility that the Levi is going to innocently sell that which is that which is not edible for, for a Jew. Namely, Trumas Meiser. After Rashi asking, is he a wicked fellow? The Shaki dummy, Mashley Trumas Meiser. He takes money, then he turns into Trumas Meiser. El Amr Mashar Shavrader of the or Mesharsha, the son of Ravidi, says, how come this is what we meant to say? Okay, so the Gemara has, the Gemara says that that obviously cannot be the scenario. There's no reason why we, we would suspect that a Levi is trying to trick a Jew into eating Trumas Meiser and, and taking a profit from it. Okay, so, so, so Mesharsha rejects that, and we have to reinterpret the price of what happened. New story. Yisrael Sharma Levi, Meiser lo avicha biyad. One second. Okay, I told your father that I had that I had his trumo. Now your father's dead. I want to buy off, buy from you. You're the inheritor. I want to buy from you. I want to buy it off of you. Here is the money. We're not concerned. The father took off trumas meiser on, on onto this uh, this this the stash that's in this guy's house. Let's say, however, he gives a number. He says kor meiser one kor. We are concerned that maybe his father turned into Trumas Meiser, 
this is Trumas Meister on, you know, what, what he got from five other people. Okay. The Gemara still finds this scenario problematic. Over here, you avoided the Russia, the evil, the evilness, the, the, the evil of it, because the guy obviously didn't know he's not the father. He's the son. He doesn't know his father's business dealings. He, his father just died. So it's not, not as wicked. There's another problem. Although it is permissible for one to take off Trumas and Isers from onto something that isn't present, Mukaf means present. Typically, a guy harvests a field, he turns it into a pile. You know, now he's high in, in Trumas and Isers. So what does he do? He takes off from that pile. However, it is permitted to take the pile, put it in your shed. And then when the next field of wheat is uh, is ready, you take off trumas meisers on the stuff you have in the sheds for the stuff you have in the yards. It's not present. Now, although that's allowed, it's not recommended. And the Gemara says, You're telling me this guy's father is clearly, clearly uh, makbid. He's, he's clearly in, ensures that trumas meisers are taken off. And yet you're going to tell me that he takes off from something that isn't present. Doesn't seem too logical. So Ravashi says, okay, we have to reject. So the second explanation, which talk, talking about the guy's father, we have to reject that as well. What are we talking about? Is new scenario. This is the scenario. Ben Yisrael Sha'amar a, 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 a The son of a, so it was a Jewish man. He tells, his son tells the Levi as follows. My father said to me as follows. My, what happened was my father separated my sir that he gave either to you or to your father. One second. Okay. Okay. In other words, my father made a statement that he owes you my sir. But my father did not know how much meiser he owes you. So then, in that scenario, the, the concern here is that because he didn't know how much it was, he could not have taken off Trumas Meiser off of it. Uh, just give me a moment. Now, and at this point, the Gemara is gonna, it will be of the opinion that the Yisrael, the Jewish, the Jewish person, is able to take off Truma's Meiser off of his Meiser. Okay. So therefore, the, uh, the father says, the father says I, to the Levi, I owe you or owe your father money. He doesn't know, he, he owes a Meiser, but he doesn't know how much Meiser there is. So then we say the father presumably did not remove Truma's Meiser. Because he doesn't know how much mice there is, there's no way to know how much to take off a trumas meiser. Even like it. Uh, one second. Even like it. Since the since the father has no clue how much it was, he could not have rectified it by taking off trumas meiser. However, if he says a number, kor meiser lechaviyadi, a kor meiser lechaviyadi, the the father the father says, I I owe you one core of meiser. So then, ain't a question of Truma's Maya's Shabbat. Even the kids, Takuni Takne Balabayas. In other words, because uh, because the father knew the, knew the correct number, presumably he wouldn't leave around Meister that, that had not had Truma's Maya's taken off. And therefore, presumably he rectified it by removing Truma's Maya's off of the Meister. So ask the Gemara, the Chiesha Rishus Balabayas, let Truma's Maya's. Does the, the Balabayas, the Jewish man, does he have a right, or Jewish woman for that matter, does he have a right to take off Trumas Meiser? Because Trumas Meiser, Meiser is given to the Levi. The Levi is responsible to take off Trumas Meiser. So the Mara says in Abba Lazar, Abba Elozer ben Gamla. It's the opinion of Abba Elozer ben Gamla, who says the Tanya Abba, Abba, Abba Elozer ben Gamla, Aymer v'nechshav lechem Trumaskam. The word v'nechshav means to uh, think about or to evaluate. You should evaluate the, the, the trumaschem, truma. Now, trumaschem is plural, means two trumas. What's the reference to? But stay trumas across the hour, two, two types of trumas. Number one, achas trumagdela. One is the first truma, which is trumagdela. Remember, trumagdela has no limit, both minimally and maximally. The recommended amount is between one and 40 and one and 60. 
1.8, 2.2%. Uh, and then Trumas Meiser, which is taken off Trumas Meiser is a fixed amount. It's 10% of Trumas Meiser, which is 10% of whatever remains after Truma, Truma itself is taken off. Just like Truma Gedola, like we said, has no, has no limit. So therefore, it can be taken off in estimation Right or b'machshava, one doesn't even have to actually say something. He could just think about it, and, and it works. <clears throat> now, it, okay, and then that's sort of learned from the fact that the Torah says the word v'nechshav. You you evaluate it. What does evaluate mean? It means you think about it to remove it. In other words, if you think that this part should be truma, it's truma. Similarly, if you think that the, that you have a hundred units and you take off one un, two units of truma, it also works. The same thing is true of Trumas Meiser. Kach Trumas Meiser, and it tells by Amir of Machshava. It could also be separated, you know, using an evaluation or in your mind without actually saying something. Yeshem Shiyesh Lor Shus of Al Bayes Lichim Truma Gedoyel or Kach Yesh Lor Shus of Al Bayes Lichim Trumas Meiser. Just like the master, just like the the guy who pl planted the field has a right to take off Truma Truma Gedoyel, he also has a right to take off Trumas Meiser. Let's think on a second. Okay, says the mission. How many Paris Lias Mafashala and Truma Truma Umaisras? Okay, somebody says so here is this is sort of a little bit of mukaf, like what we said before. What does someone do? He sets aside a pile of truma a trum, a, a, of of uh, untithed material, and he says to himself, he doesn't have to say it, he he has in mind the reason why he's doing this is so that in the future he could take off truma onto this stuff. Okay, in other words, so let's Let's say he has a he has a bunch of wheat fields. The first wheat field he puts into an into a, a life storage locker, and uh, whenever the rest the rest of the wheat comes in, it says the truma that I that I want to make it's on the right side of the of the storage locker, and the meister is on the left side, etc. And, and he adds it up until eventually he all the, the whole tr the whole storage locker is filled with truma or meister, something similar. Okay, now what happens? What burned down? It burned down, burned down, and uh, he didn't get the news till a month later. Or he does. He doesn't even know when it burned down. Now the question is: Does he have to retake Truma's Meisters here? He thought the storage locker was around, and therefore this what was in the locker was became Truma and Meister. And now it turns out none of it is. So in the is Shalem, he set aside fruit to take off Truma's Meisters. Okay, or he set aside a pile of money, mois. He opened a, 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 a safe deposit box and he put a pile of money in the safe deposit box. So Maiser Shani is typically redeemed onto money. So he has a he has a safe deposit box filled with money that he's going to redeem his Maiser on. One second. Okay, you can presume the money and the and the and the, the wheat is still around. Im avdu, let's say it got burnt, it was lost. So then there's a some sort of period where he needs to be concerned that maybe it maybe it burnt down. The simple understanding of this, of this mission, although we'll see this in the second version, is that there's a 24 hour retroactive period. So as soon as you get the news. That anything in the past 24 hours that you took off Trumas and Meisers from, that has to be done again. But anything before 24 hours does not need to be done again. We'll, see, we'll soon see there's another version. Diver of Belazar, it's opinion of Belazar. Behuda Aymer, Behuda says, The Behuda gives practical advice here. And this is, I think I mentioned on Shabbos at some point. Um, that I was in a winery, and the way that this uh, winery in Israel, the way they take of Trumas and is, is that they actually separate, uh, they separate wine, they let it ferment separately, 
they know what's going to be the Trumas and Meisters, and that is what they turn into Trumas and Meisters. So this is a similar idea, right? It's not taken from the regular barrels. It's taken from a special Trumas and Meisters barrel. That, that's in a... Just curious, right? What do they do with it once they separate? Uh, oftentimes, pour down the, so Truma is poured down the drain, and Truma's mice is poured down the drain. And uh, Meiser and Meiser Ani, I believe they keep, I'm not sure. Maybe they, they I don't know, I'm not sure they do Meiser, Meiser Ani. Meiser Shani is clearly redeemed onto a coin. Oh, what? Meiser Shani is redeemed. So you just take the for there and you take the value of it, right? You take the value and you and put it onto, and price. you put it onto, a, you put it onto a coin. You can't buy something because it needs to be in the Tahara. Nobody's eating food with Tara. That's the world. Thing. So the coin is, but, but you, it doesn't have to be in equal values. So in other words, you can put a million dollars worth of Maisa Shani onto a, you know, a 10, or 10, 10 shekel coin or whatever. And the coins are eventually redeemed onto another coin, which is eventually destroyed. We said there's, uh, they, they, uh, I think the Edah Haredes rents a rent boat every uh, 10 okay. years and they uh, deposit all the coins in the Mediterranean. So they used to they used to take a Jewish line and buy something to eat. Correct, correct. But that has to be done with with Tahara, and that doesn't work today. Okay. So now this this barrel of wine, they have to make sure it's actually wine and not vinegar. So Rabbi just says three times a year they need you need to check it to make sure that it's not it, it's actually wine and it, it hasn't turned to vinegar. And that time that when is that? The uh, uh in the beginning the the, the key, well explain what kida means. Of, of after Sukkot, Ubahit Sauce, Smodar, when the fruit begins to ripen, Smodar is sort of unripe grape, when, when, the, when the unripe grapes begin to, to uh, appear. Ubashas, Knesis, Mayan, Beboiser. Rashi has two explanations here. Either it means when they would crush the unripe grapes, or it means when the, uh, when the grapes sort of started to fill in and, and you know, grow into some of these, the small unripe grapes started to grow into you know, full size grapes. Okay, my me slice. What is this? Me slice typically means 24 hour period. What does that mean? It means from 24 hours of when you checked. See so what you, you checked the, the storage lager. Turns out everything was eaten by a rat. You have 24 hours retroactively. Anything that you took of Trim's mice in the past 24 hours is no good. It's the opposite. You have 24 hours from when you put it down that you can rely on it. But anything from un, until 24 hours after the moment you secure you secured it, that, that all has to be removed again. So the Gemara asks in the mission, it's not him of do He's concerned. The mission says if he, if it got lost, it was eaten by a rat, you're concerned. May may a slice from a time to a time. You say it means from the time until the time. It means from it means from that time, the day previously until until the time where you checked. However, if you say it means from Hanocha, it should be ad In other words, the concern here is not in the period of me'eslais, but it's the concern until the period of me'eslais. In other words. According to the first opinion, where is the, what, what's the time period of concern? It's the, the 24 hour period, May Ace Lace. It's that the period itself is a concern. Whereas, according to the second opinion, the period itself is not the concern. To the contrary, the period in question is actually kosher. You could rely on it for Trimus and It's until that period that's problematic. So, the mission's terminology should have been rephrased. I think Mars's Kasha, indeed, that remains difficult. Okay, Diver Rebbe uh, The opinion of Rebbe is that th this 24-hour period. Nehemiah has an interesting question. Okay. Um, Rebbe Lozer, uh, okay, so there's two Rebbe here. There's Rebbe Lozer ben Pidos, who is an Amaira. He's an author in the Gemara. And then there's Rebbe Lozer ben Shemua, who is the author in the Mishnah. So Rebbe Lozer, the Amaira, says about Rebbe in the Mishnah, Chalukan al Chavera of Rebbe Lozer. Rabbi Lozer says you have this 24 hour period. Everyone disagrees with him. Tanan, we learned. Mikva shenimdid venim tzachasar. So we said that we spoke about the minimum quantity for sure. The, uh, the recommended minimum quantity is one cubic meter, 1,000 liters. The 
practically speaking, absolute minimum requirement according to Chaim Noah is much closer to something like 300, 350 liters. According to Chazanish, maybe it's closer to five or 550 liters. Um, realistically speaking, though, we, we won't, nobody's going to build a mikvah today less than one cubic meter. Okay, now let's say somebody built the beer minimum mikvah, 350 liters, whatever it is, 400 liters, and uh, they measured it, and it was precise, and they, they you know, they went to the mikvah a couple of days later, and a couple of days after, after that, they measured again. Turns out the mikvah was, was missing something. So what's the halacha? Anything that was that got dipped into the mikvah, retroactively until the time of the previous, uh, you know, measurement check. Whether it's whether the mikvah was a public mikvah or a private mikvah, it doesn't make a difference. It's tummy, and the reason for this is because any item that went into the mikvah had a previous status of tumah. Mm-hmm. Now you want to say it became tar by going into the mikvah. But well, we don't know because the mikvah now is, is found as 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 missing missing the minimum quantity. And therefore, we can't kosherize it. The same is true with meiser. Everything is in the status of not having trumas and meisers. You want to say you took off trumas and meisers on the storage locker, but the, but the building burnt down. If the building burnt down. We don't know if you took off trumas and meisers. So therefore, we should say Chazaka should tell us pre- presume trumas and meisers was not taken off yet. Just like in the mikvah, it has a cheskas tumor. The presumption is that it's not it's not tahar, and and we don't know. Maybe the mikvah made it tame, maybe it didn't, but we presume it didn't because we presume the mikvah was missing at the time the item went into the mikvah. This is really a question of what you're using as the basis for the chazaka, <clears throat> the the mikvah, or the fair enough okay. so so yeah okay so that, that's a uh, it's a more complicated point but yeah there, there's a number of different chazakas here mm-hmm. in general there's always two competing chazakas when we know something changed that's called chazaka the hash to chazaka the mikara chazaka the mikara always says the previous status never changed chazaka the hash until we know it did sure. chazaka the mikara would tell you like in the case of my sir you say the storage locker burnt down the last possible moment that that we know otherwise the Chazak of the Hashta says that if a change appears in front of us, the change happened at the earliest possible time. Obviously, as you might imagine, Chazak of the Mikar always takes precedent over Chazak of the Hashta. That's because Chazak of the Mikar is a much more powerful Chazak. The previous status never changed. Now, although the mik, although the, the mikvah has, has a Chazak of the Mikar, right? The Gemara, the Gemara will say that a mikvah actually, it's, it, it normally, it's Chazak of the And this is sort of how you weaken any, any Chazak of the Mikar. Chazaka the Suya Shana seems as follows. A, a storage locker is not going to burn down. At least we hope, right? Maybe in Portland it's different. But uh, Chazaka, uh, Chazaka, that's, what's another example? Puberty, right? A girl is always, a girl has a Chazaka, she's not mature yet. She's presumed not to be mature. But we know at some point she has to mature, right? That's called the Chazaka the Suya Shana. And now the question is, when did we, did we mature? When did she mature? So therefore, this chazaka, chazaka, chazaka the mikar, even when it's a suyu is is a strong chazaka. However, it's much weaker because we know it's going to change. And therefore, a mikvah shenim shenim nimsachasa, the mikvah is a suyu l'shtanis because it's a suyu it's a suyu to be mismayed over time. The mikvah does decrease in in volume over time, and therefore, the, because the mikvah is a suyu l'shtanis, um, because the mikvah is 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 going to change. So therefore, we presume. Therefore, we say that the fact the mikvah was measured in whole doesn't mean as much as the item being in the status of of tumul. <laughs> now, the truth of the matter is that there is a difference between two scenarios. Like I explained to you, the difference is that a mikvah is a suyla shtanis, and this was not an asuyla shtanis. Uh, the the gemara does not make that distinction. And the Gemara says that regardless, the, the chazaka of tevel, right, which means that the item has the previous status of not being rectified, uh, that that's, that would be the primary the primary vision of the item. And the fact that maybe it was rectified through separating trumas and meisers on an item which may or may not have existed at the time, Suffolk, uh, in that case, the, uh, the, the chazaka de mikara of the item is going to be the more, the more potent chazaka de mikara. If you miss that, that's perfectly fine. 
That was just uh, it'll keep me on the side. Okay. So Mara says, okay, Shito. Well, obviously, if the mikvah you're treating as as missing something, and um, the mik, in other words, the mikvah we say everything retroactively is not is not tahar. So similarly, when the storage locker went on fire, everything retroactively should not be uh, should should not be trumas maestros. And this is contrary to the opinion of Rebelozer, who says it's no, it's not retroactively. It's only retroactive for twenty four hour period. Stimara so says, obviously, there's a debate here. She did the Chalukan. Stimara says, Mao Tamil Mafreya me Ace Lais, Kamash Malan. Stimara says, you're right. What we mean to say is, to the contrary of the second opinion that we said previously. In other words, we had two opinions in Rebelozer. One opinion is the first 24 hour period. The other opinion is no, it's until the last 24 hour period, right? Retroactively until 24 hours after the first, the first, the first uh, check, after the item was deposited. Maybe that would be the true explanation of Rebelozer, and therefore there isn't a debate. Mashman, that no, Rebelozer, the main, the main opinion on understanding Rebelozer is 24 hours from, uh, 24 hours retroactive to when we discovered the storage locker burnt. And yeah, it's a debate between Rebelozer and, and uh, everybody else. Okay, now we go completely sidetracked here, <clears throat> and we discuss different types of winds. Okay, winds. I, I uh, wins. If you'd like to take a more thorough look at this Gemara and try to understand what it means practically, mm -hmm. you're welcome to do so. Um, I, 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 uh, I have no doubt that there is probably some sort of physical phenomenon that explains this. I certainly don't know what it is. Uh, and I certainly believe the Gemara has a spiritual component as well. Let's go through this. You die in Begimel Prakim three times. Tana, Bikidim Shamat Sachag Shalt Kufo. Uh, what do we mean? We talk about after after uh, after um, Sukkot. We mean it has to be within the Tukufa. Tukufa means the seasons. This is the period between the solstice and the equinox, right? There are obviously four such periods every year, right? Between the uh, the solstice in uh, January and June, and the equinoxes in oh man, uh, is it March and September? Am I making this up here? What was the equinoxes? What was the equinox? April. It's April and September, right? There's no correcting here on Zoom for a moment, but when, when the equinox is on, whatever it is, it's a uh, yeah. roughly, I think it's a roughly 91 day period. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, yeah, it's roughly 90, 91 plus, 91 plus day period. Um, okay, so it has to be that the uh, circus, that it has to be after circus, which is in the the uh, period after the fall equinox. So we're heading, we're in fall now, right? So we, we've had, we've, moved, we've transitioned from uh, the the uh, the uh, summer the summer periods to the full past the full equinox. Okay. Um, okay. Tanya, Rabbi Yehuda, I'm Rabbi Yehuda says, Three times a year we sell we sell grain. When is this? before it grows. Ubeshas hazera while it's growing. Ubeprosa Pesach and on Pesach. Three times a year we sell wine. The pros ha Pesach, once in Pesach, or pros ha on Shavuos, or pros ha on Sukkot. Okay, the shemen and oil is sold me at Tzeres ve'elach from Shavuos onwards. So Gemara says the Mayhelch. So why is this relevant? In other words, what's the practicality of this? I'm a Ravi Tamer Papa Lutshutfin. So Rava says in the name of Papa for partners. In other words, if there's a partnership, where presumably the income from the property, the the um the um crop is going to be sold, it has to be sold at a market rate. Which happens in one of these times, like Rabbi Yehuda specifies. Let's say one misses it. Every day is its time. In other words, every day there, there, there's there's sales going on, and you can sell it on any given day after this period. Before this period, you have to sell it on. You have to sell it during one of these three periods. Afterwards, it's every day. Okay. Uh, when the sun rose, this is on Yaina. You remember the story of Yaina? On, on uh, we read it on Yom Kippur, right? So Yaina was uh, thrown out of the. Uh, he was he was sitting on the shoreline. The sun the sun rose. Vayiman alikim ruach kadem charishas, and God summoned an eastern an eastern wind that was charishas. It was strong. My charishas. What does it mean? It was strong. Um, Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda explains. It's a strong wind. 
These are the type of winds that create waves. Okay. So Amalei Rabba, so Rabba says, It says that the heat got so intense for Yaina that he fainted, he passed out. So hold on, if it was a strong wind that was carrying presumably, uh, you know, cooler uh, air from the oceans, so then why is it, you know, at least it was, the breeze was blowing on him, why is it that he fainted? Amarava, so Rav explains, This is the type of wind that it silences all the other winds. In other words, it's a wind that stops all the other winds from blowing, and therefore there was no wind at all. And Yaina was stuck there underneath a tree in, in a you know burning heat, and that's why he passed out. The high end of the sieve, and that's why the verse states, Asher begodecha chamim, chamim, your clothes were hot, bahashkeit eretz midorum, when the land was silenced from uh, Dorum, which is the south. The Omer of Tachlif, or Bar of Chizda, Omer of Chizda, and Rav Tachlif explained this pasuk, Eimasai begodecha chamim, when are your clothes hot? Beshaw shahashkeit eretz midorum. Uh, one second. When when the earth is oh, okay. So, uh, one second. Okay. In other words, when when there ceases to be the in other words the southerly wind. That would have cooled you down. When the southerly wind is silenced, that is going to cause you to get to get hotter. Shabbos <laughs> uh, One second. When this, when the. Uh, when the because in other words, what happened was when the east when the easterly wind blow, blew. It, it it stopped the rest of the winds from blowing, and that's why you got hot. It's mainly the southerly wind. The southerly wind would have cooled down everybody. But because the easterly wind was blowing, it stopped all the other winds from blowing, and therefore, that's why you're hot. Um, yes, we'll see, we'll see one more Gemara. Rav Huna and Rav Chizda. Rav Huna and Rav Chizda have a yasfi. They were sitting down and discussing Chol of Ozl Geneva. So there was a fellow whose name was Geneva. Geneva was a major Torah scholar and also a crook. And a very difficult person to get along with. If you remember the Gemara and Davov, we learned about it on uh, while, while I was away. Actually, missed teaching that Gemara. Uh, the Gemara says that Rabbi Vu got, had a really hard time from Geneva. So much that Rabbi Vu Davin that Geneva should have difficulty, you know, with the, with the government. And indeed, he did. So Amar uh, Chalachavri. So one of these Rav Chizda, one of them said to their friend, "Nekam Mekamid Baruriyanu." Let's get up from somebody who's a big Torah scholar. Amar Lei Idaf. The other guy says no. You think I'm going to get up from a guy who makes fights? So Geneva saw the two scholars. So he walked over to them. He said to them, So what, what are you studying now? We're talking about the winds. So Geneva participated in the discussion. And he said as follows. There are four winds that blow every day. And the northerly wind blows with every every other one, every other wind. Because the north the northern wind is necessary. If not for it, the world wouldn't be able to to uh, to, to stand. The the uh, southerly wind is the most difficult. If not for the fact that an angel stops the wind from blowing, it would destroy the world. Nets, the angel called Nets, he stops the wind from blowing. Stop here. Okay.